question for you. What does baseball stub hub and your health benefits at work all have to do together? I'm not sure, but we're going to find out together. And I think we have a perfect person to help explain it. Tom Masney. How are you, sir? I'm good, Neil. How are you? Excellent. I guess your uh, past life and your current profession uh, makes you uniquely qualified for this. Yes, a little bit different. Um, <laughs> you know, nobody thinks about employee benefits when they think about baseball. Um, and the transition that our industry is going through, there's a lot that can be learned from the sports arena in general. Yeah, and of course we have the background of progressive field. And you were a pitcher for how many years in the major leagues? In the major leagues, I was there for three years. Okay. Uh, yeah, played professionally for about nine years. Three in the big leagues, one year over in Japan. Um, so I've done a lot, seen a lot, um, and, and missed parts of it. Understand. And uh, Tom runs the Pennant Group in West Augusta. And maybe do this correlation for us in our three-part series here Three main approaches to baseball and how it kind of correlates to employee benefits. Yeah. So, you know, again, nobody thinks of employee benefits when I think of baseball. Mm -hmm. But um, as, a, as a baseball coach, I'm now coaching my son's mm -hmm. 10U travel baseball team, and we talk to them on a daily basis about what the difference is between an elite team and an average team. And as I look at business, it's how I correlate benefits, you know, having an elite benefits package versus just an average benefits package. Mm -hmm. And really the strategies that, that we take and what I instill in these kids are trying to instill is really effort, strategy, and patience. So those are the three approaches that we take to baseball, and those are the three approaches that I take to employee benefits. Um, you know, so I'll, I'll expand on that a little bit. Sure. So from an from an effort standpoint, um, it's not necessarily the skills that you have on the benefits world or in the baseball field. All right, so let's start with effort. I, I get it being an old baseball player myself. you got to hustle, but how about effort as it relates to benefits? Yeah, so, you know, like, like baseball and sports, um, in order to achieve a goal, which is usually victory, um, it, it takes effort. Um, and when you look at employee benefits, it's a long-term approach. It is a game. Um, you're trying to achieve a certain outcome with that. Um, and it takes effort that you need to put forth to achieve that goal. Um, it, it takes skills. I mean, you do want to have the right proper skills to obtain that. But more or not, it's really the effort. And when you put that in on a day-to-day -day basis, that's how you're going to achieve that desired outcome. As for strategy, what type of strategy – you use coaching, the little kids, yeah. and then how about some of the clients that you might work with as well? Right. So, you know, like every team, every client is different, um, and your lineup is different, right? You have to have a strategy when you approach a game. You can't just say, you know what, go pick your position. Um, you have to know your opponent, and you have to know what, who lines up with the best matchup with who you're facing. So every client is different. Uh, every team you play is different. Every strategy should be different for that that day. Um, and that's how I look at benefits for my clients. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach. It's really a, you know, what's going to help us on this day to get our desired outcome. And how do you stress patience, the third um, leg of the stool, if you will? Yeah, I think patience is the hardest, right? Uh, we're in a society of immediate gratification. Mm -hmm. We want everything to happen now. And how I look at um, benefits for my clients is a three to five year plan. Uh, we're not going to necessarily fix the problem day one. Um, the first step in anything is realizing that we have a problem and then how do we fix it? And that's where the strategy comes in. Um, but we have to be patient to get there. It's like I tell my kids, right? We're going to go down a path with the strategy that we think and sometimes it's going to work and sometimes it's not. But how you adjust to that is how we will achieve that ultimate goal and we'll be successful in anything that we do. So it's, it's just being patient, um, analyzing, and making sure that we're putting in the right moves um, to get to where we want to be. We're continuing to chat with uh, Tom Masney, the CEO of The Pennant Group and online at thepennantgroup.com. And for those who are just not up to speed on the comprehensive look at benefits, what are some of the type of services, typical services that you might offer to an employer? 
Yeah, so we are an employee benefits consultant. Um, so we look at your benefits package holistically, um, but our main focus is medical insurance, dental, vision, um, and then we do some short-term, long-term disability. We don't do any retirement planning. We don't do any property and casualty insurance. Mm-hmm. Our strict specialty is employee benefits on the medical side. Okay, fair enough. Um, how were you able to measure success in the baseball world, and how do you measure success for your clients? Yeah, so, so like I said earlier, success is measured differently. Everybody has a different desired outcome, and success means different things to different, different people. Um, the way I measured success is how I looked at my ultimate goal. Um, I think in anything in life, we talk about goals and setting goals and trying to achieve those goals. Um, and a goal for one company may be different than another. Uh, but in baseball, I measured success on small, measurable, meaningful, incremental outcomes on a day-to-day basis. So I would go with what I needed to work on, and I would work towards that that goal. And that little, um, maybe it was a flaw in my mechanics, mm-hmm. and I would just focus on that. And I may not see the desired immediate um, outcome the next time out, but over time, I would start to see the, um, the patient's I would start to see that it would reward me for the hard work that I was putting in. Interesting. So do you also tweak the way your clients approach benefits, not only from services, but maybe even the way that they can pay to have the type of insurance? Yeah. So, you know, again, really it's, it's sitting down on, you know, and having an, a, a conversation with each client of what are we trying to accomplish and, you know, approaching it saying, hey, maybe we need to just be fully insured. Maybe we need to just go status quo for right now mm-hmm. until we figure out what's going on. Um, but ultimately, it's what are we trying to accomplish? What's your end goal? Why are you offering benefits? And then putting the right funding mechanism, whether that's fully insured, self-funded or level funded, in place for that client that's going to help them um, reach what they're trying to achieve. Sure. And I'm always a big believer in transparency. And how do you equate that to baseball and also to taking care of employee benefits? Yeah. So we're in a world now where we have access to a lot of data. Um, Transparency is key into making any informed decision. Um, So for baseball, baseball is now becoming um, data-driven. Sabermetrics have become, you know, basically the key behind baseball. And that's why we see all these shifts. And that's why we see analytics, analytics. And And at the end of the day, you know, that is starting to trickle down into um, benefits. And and I think that's a good thing. I looked at at transparency when I was playing baseball as if I know what I need to accomplish and what other people are thinking about me and what my weaknesses are, then I can actually fix them. I can do something about it to achieve my ultimate goal. Um, there was a, a, a gentleman that was a, a consultant for the Cleveland Indians when I was with them. His name was Carl Keel. Um, he wrote a book called The Mental, Mental Game of Baseball. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember vi- vividly sitting down with him after a bullpen, and I had struggled, and he said, well, what's going on? I said, I really don't want to talk to you about you know, my bullpen, right? Like, it, what do you know? You, you know, I didn't know his full background. Yeah. Shame on me. But um, he started asking me questions about what was going on. And I said, listen, I, I have a sinker, and it's just not sinking the way that it used to sink. Right. And I want that pitch back. And he looked at me and said, you're never going to have that pitch back. And I said, well, I really want that pitch back because that was my go-to. He said, you're never going to have it. Forget about it. Just move on. And it He's like, what you have today is what you have today, and what you have tomorrow is what you have. You need to learn to deal with what you have on any given day and take those small incremental steps to get to a desired outcome. And then or, you developed a rising fastball, right? Sure. If that's, <laughs> you know, if that's what I had that day, that's what I had, right? Wow. But it, it's carried over into the benefits world where where we are today, we're here for a reason. We can't look in the past and try and get back to it. Mm. All we can do is manage what we have today and try and get to where we want to be. And it's going to look different for every person and every company. But if we have a goal in mind and we have access to data and we have a plan, 
then we can ultimately get there. And lastly, uh, for this part one of our series, what type of uh, maybe new concepts are there out there? Yeah, I think th there's a lot of things that we're working on here in the CSRA. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a trickle down effect from the Northeast. And it's a, I guess you'd call it a trickle across from the West Coast. We tend to get things a little bit later in the game down here in the Southeast. Um, I'm part of a group of 32 other like-minded brokers, consultants across the country, and we're trying to implement new products, new plan designs, new concepts, whether that's technology, whether that's funding mechanisms. We're really trying to create the best of, I guess, the, the country and bring that uh, to our market here. In fact, uh, we shared a video on Tom's Thought Leader page on AugustaBusinessDaily.com, I guess with the CEO mm -hmm. of the, your parent company, for lack of better terms, if you will, right, and 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 they really are on the cutting edge because they're you know been quoted in Wall Street Journal and some really reputable publications and such. And and again, uh, it's AugustaBusinessDaily.com for Tom's Thought Leader page, and his website is thepennantgroup.com. Thepennantgroup.com. A lot of these concepts are online. And we wanted to take a moment to thank the folks uh, who handle our podcast for us here. We've got some information up on the screen. Get Up Productions, the website, YouTube page, you can see lots of different examples. Well, we want to continue with the second part of our series with former Major League pitcher Tom Masney of the Pennant Group. Hey, Tom. Neil, how are you? Great. Uh, I'm Neil Gordon with Augusta Business Daily. And because Tom's uh, previous life was so heavily involved at Progressive Field and at baseball stadiums, we thought we would use an analogy, if you will, a correlation of StubHub as it relates to how baseball works now and then also how that correlates um, to employee benefits. Why don't we start with why people are using StubHub now? Yeah. So, you know, why StubHub? Why Kayak, right? Um, how people are purchasing, um, you know, tickets um, has really changed. And it's a changing in employee benefits and how we access care, um, where we go, why we go, and what we're getting out of it. You know, so we look at StubHub and you know, StubHub, there's a, a many different ways of getting tickets to events, but StubHub is very widely known, mm -hmm. and, and people go to it for a number of different reasons. But really, it's, it's price, outcomes, yep. and options. And convenience, too, right? Right, it is. It makes it, it easy, but mm -hmm. it's, it's really about, you know, we know what our price is. We know what we're willing to pay. Um, we know options, where we sit, why we sit there. And then we know what our outcomes are, because if we sit here, we'll get this result. We also are sometimes willing to overpay mm -hmm. for a, a particular ticket because we know that that outcome that we'll get will be a more desirable outcome. And that is starting to correlate into employee benefits. We have technology now that allows you to see what the cost of procedures are before you get that, that procedure. Mm -hmm. We also know that some doctors are not as highly rated as other physicians. So why would I go to one physician if my outcome won't be as good as going to another? And sometimes that physician or that facility might cost a little bit more money, but my outcome is going to, going to be better. And my chance of reoccurrence or having to have a secondary follow-up procedure is going to be less by going to um, the higher priced option. Makes sense. And, uh, Tom Masty is the CEO of the Pennant Group, and although you can't buy a pair of tickets to the doctor's office at thepennantgroup.com, he does have lots of great information to try to help you. And do you feel your industry is, in fact, um, going more and more to technology and transparency? And what do you think the future looks like? Yeah, it is. It has to. Everything um, in our world is going that direction. Um, there's been legislation that's been passed down um, and being proposed that is requiring that, you know, full transparency. You know, we're trying to um, get hospitals to put out what every procedure charges um, and is charged for 
so that you know going into it what your cost is going to be. Um, and I think that's huge. Um, let's let's correlate it to going to the grocery store. Mm-hmm. All right. So if I go to the grocery store and I'm checking out and I, I buy all these items, I got a cart full of items and I go up and I start scanning everything and scanning everything. And I know how much money that I can spend and I'm willing to spend. And I think I know how much this costs, but at the end of it, I go to check out and give them my credit card and the, um, the checkout person goes, well, we'll send you an invoice. We'll send you a bill in 30 days <laughs> and that'll tell you how much we owe you. Owe. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's how our, our world works. That's how the medical community operates and technology and legislation is trying to change that. And I think that's huge for our market and our industry. And we have to evolve. Um, employees have to evolve. Employers have to evolve. And consultants have to evolve with them to stay on top of that so they know what uh, products to put in place to help them achieve their desired outcomes. And specifically... If an employer has an idea of what a procedure may cost for an employee, will that impact what you suggest the plan an employer chooses? Meaning, I know they can share the benefit cost with employees, but but there's other ways that they can actually pay medical bills. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there's there's a uh, multitude of different options out there. Um, You know, I think... First and foremost is getting data. Data is key. And what one company implements from a a plan perspective may be completely different than what another company does. But it's based off of the conditions in the group and the costs that are driving um, the premiums. And until we know that information, we can't make recommendations of what we put in. We're just kind of throwing darts and hoping something sticks. Um, You know, but from a consumer standpoint, you know, Cash is king, you know, uh, everywhere you go, you can pay cash and that might be the cheapest option for you. Um, you know, I know physicians, physician practices, doctors, um, uh, practices, hospitals, they'll take cash because they're looking for cash flow and instant cash flow means that they can pay bills a lot easier. Um, and they'll give you a discount for it. So, you know, I'm not saying that is the end all be all way of doing this, but for certain employees, for certain groups, that might be the route to go. Yeah. Do you do you ever have these StubHub like conversations with any of your clients or people that you're just trying to introduce uh, your trustworthy service to? Absolutely. You know, there's there's a concept that's going through our community. Um, it's going across the country, and it's direct primary care, mm. and it's basically providers and physicians are fed up with the system also. Um, And they're looking for better quality life um, and to truly get into medicine and get back to the reason that they got into medicine. And that is to service their patients. Um, So direct primary care is in our community today um, and it's continuing to grow. And that is an avenue that a lot of employers are starting to look at. Our ultimate goal in with my agency is to offer a product that is a direct-to-employer relationship that puts the power back into the employers so they can make educated decisions on where they get their health care and where they're spending their money. And it's happening in every other service industry. Why not Why not? Yours? Why not benefits? Absolutely. Well, to learn more about Tom's services and really to sit down and um, – have a chat with him, a consultation. Uh, please go to the pennantgroup.com, the pennantgroup.com. He and his wife have relocated here to Augusta. Their office is in West Augusta. Again, the pennantgroup.com. And uh, we're so thankful for the folks at Get Up Productions and uh, the studio that they provide. And again, uh, all of the information is up on the screen if you'd like to take a look at some other podcasts. And uh, Tom's podcasts are all also chronicled at AugustaBusinessDaily.com. I want to continue uh, the third part of our three-part series, which correlates baseball the StubHub ticket brokering world and benefits for your employees as it, uh, as it relates to healthcare and such. Uh, Tom Mastney's with us. How are you, sir? I'm good, Neil. How are you? Excellent. Well, I really like what you shared about 
uh, baseball in, in part one and effort strategy and patience and learning and, and education and coaching and then StubHub with technology and transparency on what things should cost and decisions employers have to make. Um, you say there are four Bennett of benefit strategies businesses keep trying to work on to contain spending. Um, why don't we start with the first one, fully insured contracts. What does that mean? Yeah, so you, you know what the definition of insanity is, correct? You do the same thing over and over, and you expect different results. Right. Well, unfortunately, that's where our world is. Um, we are in a reactive um, community in employee benefits, and something has to change. Um, so fully insured contracts is the world that we live in, and that is – uh, where we've been for the last 20 plus years, um, Augusta and the CSRA in general is a small market. Um, so small markets are really employers that are under 500 uh, from an employee count. Um, Augusta is a step further down than that. I'd say our average size employer is probably in the 40s to 50s. Mm-hmm. Um, up until the last couple of years, we really haven't had access to certain contracts um, and different funding mechanisms, and we live in a fully insured world. So fully insured contracts is a strategy, believe it or not. It has been our only option, but it's a strategy that we keep doing over and over. The problem with fully insured contracts is there is uh, zero visibility into data, so I don't know what our claims are, um, and there's zero control. So I can't make any adjustments to plan design to really benefit my company as a whole, and I don't know what's driving my costs. So we get our renewal, you know, 75 days out if we're lucky, 60 days out is um, standard. That's what the insurance companies have to Mm -hmm. give us. Uh, It's 45 days if you're in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So right there, they're putting our backs against the wall and saying, hey, we need a decision right now. By the way, you're getting a 20% rate increase. Wow. And we say, why? And they say, well, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> right? <laughs> it just costs more, it, but we don't know take, what costs more. Take our word for it. Mm-hmm. Trust, you know, they say we you overspent. Okay, well, tell us why. Um, that's the biggest key, right? Why? And that's until you know why, you can't make an, an, an educated decision. We're, we're living in a reactive world when we're in a fully insured contract. Fully insured contracts may be the right funding mechanism for you at the time, but it's not your only option. Okay. How about industry best practices? How does that play into all this? Yep. So industry best practices, kind of a a general term, right? So when I say industry best practices, it's not um, consultant best practices. It is at the end of the day, it's industry. So it's... um, health insurance companies coming to us with uh, ideas of how to drive down our costs. Well, again, if we don't have the data and we don't know what's truly driving the costs and we're taking the fully insured carrier's word for it, well, their best interests may not align with our best interests. And we're putting most of those solutions are Teladoc, Wellness, um, but they're owned by the insurance company themselves. So, we have no ROI on really what those programs are doing for us. Uh, we're just seeing renewals go up and up and up. And we're taking the insurance company's word that what we're doing is helping. At this, at this point, I don't want to just take their word. I want to see the data. I want the transparency. I want to put the right products in for our clients when they need them. We're continuing to chat with uh, Tom Masney, who's the CEO of the Pennant Group, a um, employee benefits company based in West Augusta and online at thepennantgroup.com. Um, you believe we've been overpaying for activity over outcomes. What does that mean? Yeah. So, like I said earlier, we are in a reactive uh, <clears throat> world when it comes to employee benefits. Um, especially if we're in a a fully insured contract, even if we're level funded or partially self-funded, but it's owned by the insurance um, company themselves, our data is very limited. Uh, We get hit with a rate increase. Um, You know, if you get a rate pass, which means no renewal, I mean, no rate increase, Mm. uh, you're very lucky. 
Um, but on average, we're seeing 8 to 10 to 20 to 50% rate increases year over year for no reason. And our only solution is to, to, to decrease those costs is to increase co-pays, increase deductibles, increase max out of pocket. So we're basically just cost shifting. We're taking money from one pocket and moving it to the other pocket. And pushing it to the employee. We're putting more onus on the employee. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, in reality is most employees and most people in America are living paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. And when maybe their cost of insurance didn't go up or it went up slightly, but their out-of-pocket expenses when they go to the physician is now increasing, we're still hurting them. Um, and our ultimate goal is to put our employers in a position where they can truly help employees by offering a benefit where they may get an increase, but it's a justified increase. And then we're putting in a cost containment strategy and cost containment solution that's right for that company that will really help slow down the increase or even get their, their trend to level off um, and get better desired outcomes for those employees. It seems kind of like a passive way to manage your health care. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, we are in a passive world. And, you know, the, the fourth strategy is how do we get from a passively managed product to where we are to an actively managed product? Um, so my, my firm is looking at benefits um, with an active management approach. Um, it's sitting down and having a three- to five-year plan and making sure we're putting in the right products that are right for you, not what's right for everybody else, but what's right for you so you can see the ROI on your investment or you know, um, reach the desired outcome that's best for you. Um, I talked earlier in the series about small, incremental, manageable, meaningful outcomes. Mm -hmm. And if we're actively managing a plan, we're putting in those procedures. We may go down a path because we think it's the right path because the data at the time dictates and says that we should go down this path. But if we're actively managing it and we find out that this is not where we need to go, then we can turn that ship and go down another path. But if we don't have that data and we're not looking at it regularly – or we're not actively managing it with our clients, then we're going to get to the end of that that path and realize that we made a huge mistake, and now we've got to backtrack a lot more. Where do you find the cost savings that you're able to share with uh, folks who maybe have been, as we said at the beginning, doing things the same way over and over, year after year, and expecting different results? You know, it's different for each group, mm -hmm. but the biggest cost driver that we've found, um, and it's it's not for every group, but I would say the majority of the groups, is the uh, pharmaceutical side. Okay. Uh, so the cost of prescriptions keep going up and up and up, um, and they are not, there's no regulation that dictates competition. So at, at the end of the day, we realize like competition in life is a good thing. Um, competition for businesses is a good thing. It holds people accountable, um, and it controls costs. Um, on the pharmacy side, there's been a very loose um, set of regulations put in place, and hands have been tied um, in order to make changes. And I hate to say it, but it goes back all the way up to Washington and lobbying groups and big pharma and who's really dictating um, the price, you know, there's prescriptions that range, um, you know, if you see a drug on TV, that, that TV drug is how I call it, mm -hmm. costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. On average, it's $800 to $24,000 a month mm. for that prescription. Mm. We don't see that data in a fully insured contract. We don't know if that employee, and due to HIPAA regulations, I can't be told hey, who's driving up my costs? You know, they can just say, ah, there's something in there, but I don't know. Um, when we get away from that and get into a self-funded uh, world, which is sounds scary, but it, it's really not. There's safe, safe gaps in place and guardrails per se to, to keep you on track. When you get data, then you can make educated, informed decisions. But the prescription side of things is really what's driving the costs. 
And that's really where you can do a lot of work and help for your employers. Well, if you'd like to take a look at maybe making a transition to a different way of handling your benefit costs, you might want to go to Tom's website. It is thepennantgroup.com, thepennantgroup.com. And I really love a lot of information. A lot of it correlates uh, to sports and baseball and uh, being part of a team and cost sharing and all of that. So I, I would definitely uh, urge you to take a look. And then and then what would be the next step after that? Would they sit down? Yeah, yeah. to me it's about having an open, honest, transparent conversation. Um, obviously, we would love at the Pentagon Group to have you as a client, mm-hmm. but we're, we're realists. We're not going to be the right fit for every single employer group. Um, but we would just love an opportunity to, to help educate. I really think at the end of the day, education is key. Um, until you know what's driving your costs or how our industry works, we're always going to be in a reactive um, situation, and it's tough to make proactive, um, goal-driven, um, you know, forward-thinking decisions without taking an active role and rolling up your sleeves and looking at your benefits. Yeah, and the worst feeling in the world as a business owner is to think you're getting taken advantage of. Yeah. That's that's terrible. So maybe just get started with Tom uh, with a chat or, again, thepennantgroup.com. Tom, thank you so much for uh, looking at things a little bit differently. It's, it's time to shake things up. Yeah, always a pleasure. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tom.